Maximus PMB track's been released. Yeah, man. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna look at it in a minute. But uh, we have some questions to go over, and uh, I have an interview with Ryan Lutz. So, uh, and yeah. this is gonna be a short podcast. So let's drop that intro. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book racing. It's hard not to be arrogant when you're always right. You know? See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you <laughs> arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say but it's definitely worth a listen and our pick can you stop whatever you're doing join your host Letty the great with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our city. hey after that race that i watched this morning i have to talk about it here we go 100 bucks right here 100 throw oh no <laughs> i like this Yes, indeed. Nitrous to glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number one eighty two of the No Name RC podcast. I'm your host, Keena White, aka Left to the Great, and to my left is the somewhat loved, sometimes hated, but definitely appreciated, Maximus Mortimus. What's up, Max? A little bit hungover from last night. Uh, Was yes. you partying like <laughs> while college party times? Yeah, now we have, uh, the thing is like, 1st of May is a huge, uh, huge party for uh, students uh, in in Finland and I think Sweden and some parts of Europe as well. But here, uh, the uh, sort of university students have taken it up a notch. So the 1st of May, it starts from 1st of April and lasts the whole month of April until the 1st of May. So you guys so just, just parties just get... every day. Like what, I, what? Like I don't know, man. You guys' version of partying is a little bit different from mine. So yeah, you gotta I guess. maybe explain I mean, this. Are you guys just sitting around in hoodies, drinking beer? Oh no, on a fire? no. Last night, last night we had when we went out to a club. It was just like all our students. I okay. mean, it's the middle of the week, so no normal people can drink. Oh, okay. On a right. Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's part of college life, university life. Yeah. You, have, you must yeah. enjoy it. But uh, thank you for your time. You're a little bit hungover. Uh, I'm cool. It's Thursday while we're recording this. Everybody's on their way to PMB. Looks great. They released the track. We'll talk about that in a bit. But before I go on any further, I have to say my thank yous and have some shout outs. I want to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad around the world. We guys can't do it without you guys. Thank you for all the support. We greatly appreciate it. Keep sharing, keep liking, disliking, commenting, whatever you want to do, as long as we get it out there in the stratosphere. Uh, the YouTube is really picking up, Max. Uh, we're getting yeah. 1,000 to 1,500 views per per pod on there, which is pretty good. And people might be like, that's nothing. But like we're talking about two-hour podcasts, three-hour podcasts here. Yeah. So it's not like a five-minute video. So thank you to everybody. Remember, go hit that uh, subscription button, that notification button, that like or dislike button, leave reviews. All that helps get us out there in the stratosphere. Thank you to the patrons of the NNRC. Max, we need to, we owe them a Patreon only pod. We need to figure out some time to do that. Uh, and I need to figure out, I was trying to figure out a way we can have a giveaway for the patrons and they can win something uh, with PNB. Maybe we have to talk about it and think about it. We'll see. But thank you to the patrons of the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. We got some new ones here recently. So I appreciate that, that support. We can't do it without you guys. If you wish to be a patron, the link for that is in the written description of this podcast. Also, thank you to the awesome companies that support and, you know, sponsor us. They are Invisible Speed. Check out Joseph's uh, clip. I actually need to clip that video and put it up where he talks about what you can win. Uh, if you're going to the world's warm-up, it's a couple of days with him, Robert Battier, and Ronafog with some one-on-one 
coaching, I would say, and, you know, stuff like that, hanging out with them. So check that out. TZO Tire, shout out to Nick and those guys. Dude, Nick had a story getting back home. He's like, dude, it was crazy. He had to crawl back home because his van was messed up. Shout out to them. High Tech RC, thank you for all the support. High Tech TNR Fuel, shout out to Chris Nelson and his family. Beach RC, I see they are at PMB. Shout out to Brent Lucas and those guys. Techno RC, good luck to all the techno guys this weekend. Shout out, maybe if Tebow wins, that'd be great. And then he could come on the podcast and it'll be great. Uh, shout out to all the lugs, uh, racing tires, guys. I know they'll be going to this race. Uh, all to, to the, all the, uh, all of the Mayako uh, movement around the world. Shout out to you guys. JQSM, G-Spec RC tuning for all your cabling needs. Papa Willie's Traction Tonic for all your traction needs. Racecraft USA for all your pitting needs. We do have... Uh, Coupon codes for every one of those. Check them out in the written description. Clinic RC with his badass air filters. JTP RC. Shout out to the RCGP crew. House of RC. Shout out to my boy RC Kevin, who I think is actually going to be going to Silver State. So I actually finally got a chance to meet him. Uh, so that'd be great. And I just have a few shout outs before we go. Uh, happy birthday to my boy Michael Norris. This was his birthday yesterday. That's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's from Albuquerque and hangs out with all those guys. And I really miss going to races with those guys. They were a lot of fun. These are also the guys who got me, like, the pa- he's the guy who gave me the two packy chips as well. Oh. <laughs> so, but he even said I was crazy with the toe of Satan because that was too much. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to him. Happy birthday. And I have to say shout out to uh, Katie and David Carmandy, who I got to hang out with briefly at RCGP. They also gave me this cool hat. My wife really likes it, Katie, so she's probably going to commandeer it. But uh, race like a girl, don't give an inch. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for that. Uh, you should be happy, very happy. We had the female, uh, Samantha Joan, win. Queen, now, she's queen of the streets. She's not king of the streets, but she's queen of the street. So that's cool. Thank you for them. It was great to see them. My buddy Marlo Brightness on Carter, DJ Hepler, Wes and Logan Coek. Uh, I got to meet some new people from Florida, but I had known them. Uh, Tony and Josie Patashaw, we drove up. Uh, it was good to see Big Jimbo. And then I finally got to meet Corey Jordan, EKJ24000 on YouTube. I finally got to meet him at RCGP. And his work is getting better and better, so go check him out. Give him a like and a follow. Uh, uh, sorry, and a notification on YouTube. And I got to meet a good friend of mine. He's a father, like we're about the same age, and he has two children. His children are older than mine, but we've become good friends. Uh, it was Tony Chandler and his son, Josiah. So it was really nice to meet them at RCGP. Uh, yeah, it was. I just can't get over how much people I meet, and I have to kind of be like, this is my way of saying it was nice to meet them. And whatnot. So it was great to see all these people at RCGP. I will be doing this every couple of podcasts because I just can't help like shouting out the people that I met. And on a somber note and not so good note, our condolences go out to the Pacific Northwest RC community. Uh, Shannon Azor, who uh, is the father of a friend of mine, Austin Azor, used to run JQ Racing up there in the Pacific Northwest. And he was a stalwart up there and up there. And he passed away. So our condolences go out to Austin and his family, and to uh, the Pacific Northwest RC community. I believe they've started a GoFundMe. I'll find it, and we'll share it, and hopefully we can get some funds to help pay for the burial or whatever, because it was, just, I don't know what happened, but it seems like it was sudden death. And it's always a shame when we lose somebody in our RC family. So our condolences to him and his family. All right, Max. So we have quite a few questions. Not many. You know, actually... One thing I noticed, uh, a lot of people disagree with me on the Orlowski. Uh, yeah, move, I saw that. I US, saw that on YouTube. So I thought. But I think I, it was. Uh, I think it was a takeout. If you ask me, it was yeah, a takeout. Yeah, I wanted to touch on that because some people said, okay. "Oh, if you look closely, uh, Marcus uh, sort of slowed down or had a like he didn't hit the apex of the corner basically, and they are right, he didn't. But still, Orlowski shot down like properly shot down uh, the down ramp and dove into the inside and there just wasn't any space for him to go there like it's uh, like he jumped right into there too he didn't yeah, drive in there he, he like jumped and landed yeah, there he, and it was like no like i get yeah, it he, it was a shot, gap there yeah he shot right into there yes there was a gap but the gap wasn't big enough and uh and he ended up taking out marcus so yeah to to me uh okay i 
like perhaps Orlowski thought there was a bigger cat gap made it sort of a judgment issue there but still like that is a takeout it, and like yeah in my opinion if i was the judge it would be a cl clear penalty it wasn't no racing incident or nothing uh, yeah, i think uh, any judge would have gave that to to yeah, Ar yeah. would have gave a penalty to arlowski because yeah. it's kind of yeah go ahead sorry yeah uh, yeah and the thing i one comment at least said that or Lowski or or Marcus uh sort of slowed down or didn't hit the apex. That's still no excuse. Like when you lead, you judge the pace. You can do whatever pace you want, unless you're obviously brake checking or something like that. That's a different deal. But this wasn't none of that. He was just didn't hit the apex, but still held his line. There was no gap inside. Orlowski tried to go in and it didn't work out. And yeah, then Orlowski is fully to blame, in my opinion. There's no if, ands, or but. Oh, uh, you I must have piqued the interest of the Schumacher crew. I, I, I think I, I like because yeah, some because of them were are, like they thought yeah. he wasn't at fault at all. So I thought these guys must be some Schumacher crew, or they must be that. Joey Fisher and those and, guys because they love Schumacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and the thing is, like, don't get me wrong, Orlowski a lot of the times gets screwed over, like. A lot of these races, he gets taken out. Uh, like he gets the short end of the stick almost always. So I feel for them. I get I get their frustration. But here, right. like, like I I when when that happens, I I say it. But when Orlaska takes someone out, I say it too. And I I I have respect for him. I like yeah, we are friends. I I think so. Yeah, I have nothing against him. I think just there he did wrong. A lot of other times previously. Uh, he has gotten taken out, and yeah, so I can feel for their uh, frustration. But I, I think this. Was I think had he been driving cut. like kind of like what Mason Fuller had done, and be shooting for that line, it might have been a little bit different. Yeah, but it's like he yeah. absolutely jumped like into that. Yeah, like, does it yeah. make sense? And, and the thing is, like, if the wheels were like like touching, if it was wheel against wheel, I'd mm. say that would have been on the limit, but perhaps pass but here he just shot right into the side of the his car so right. i don't that's think what it looked any, like to me any yeah but yeah oh. I, it was it's actually nice for people to comment so i mean i get sometimes uh i get things wrong probably this time i still stand behind what i said i don't think i was wrong because to me that's what it was but it's nice when people interact yeah like of course it. interact yeah yeah I, that's what we want we don't want you all to like yeah we want to hear your thoughts as well yeah. All right. So, I, Max, you know what? I think we should just kind of go right into questions. And um, yeah. yeah. Well, let's week we got a few. Um, one, the first one's pretty interesting. So, I like to say thank you to BTRC for the con continued support. And they bring you today's BTRC Bent Racing QA. BeachRC.com, the racer's one stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. And thank you to Brent and Lucas for their continued support. Good luck to all the BeachRC team at PMB. If you guys can, we have an affiliate link that really helps us. BeachRC also puts a lot of money back into racing. So check them out. If you really want to support a brick and mortar hobby shop, check out BeachRC. Use our affiliate link. It, uh, we got a little slice of that. It is in the written description. Thank you to everybody that does that. All right, Max. First question is up is about the new mag brake electric magnetic braking kit from ProStar. And he, this Louis Quesadilla, no, sorry, not Quesadilla, Casada, sorry, says, what's, your, what's our thoughts on the innovation and has anybody tried doing this before or is this really a first? So have you seen anything about this, Max? Uh, I mean, I have never seen anyone do this, but I mean, probably someone has done something similar or at okay. least thought about something similar. Oh, it's always like, 
almost a lot of the stuff that people think are completely new in RC, someone has done, but it just hasn't mm-hmm. worked out. But yeah, I don't, I don't really know. So, I mean, it could be a first, who knows? So, you know what the basics of this is? It's a electromagnetic. So this is supposed to eliminate the servo, uh, all this type of stuff. And I guess your brakes are activated via magnets. Yeah. So I, I took a look at it. To me, it looks like they are, instead of a servo pulling a rod, that's pushing mm-hmm. the brakes together. You are uh, using a, a electromagnet and then you're mm-hmm. using the opposite poles. So when you engage the electromagnet, the poles push each other away and that pushes mm. the brakes test together. That's, that's how I think it is. I don't think it's the rotation that slows it down, but I, I mean, I, I could be wrong. I'm not hundred percent sure, but that's how I got it from the pictures. Uh, uh, he said there were quite drastic weight savings. And I think that would be the case that a servo generally weighs any, anything from 60 to 75 grams generally. Mm-hmm. So you eliminate most of that by just putting a micro servo to pull a throttle and then the brake brake, uh, pads or the electromagnets, those will weigh a bit more than a regular center diff mount uh, or regular brake system. But sort of the effect of eliminating the servo, the the heavy servo, I should say, that sort of balances out. And I think he said the overall weight savings were about 20 to 30 grams, something like that. So that would be pretty big in my books of weight savings yeah. I, I really want to see how this works in real world 45 minutes 60 minute a mains you know this is a lot to see i'm all for any type of innovation i want to see yeah. it tested in racing and under under vigorous under like sportsman conditions under pro conditions because they use they use their throttle fingers in a different way but yeah. if it works, then I say, yeah, let's do it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. My, my sort of, uh, uh, thoughts on if it's going to work or not, or my biggest concerns, I should say, are heat. So if it's really mm-hmm. cold weather or it's it, the car heats up during the main magnets generally don't like heat that much. So I don't know how that will work. I'm not sure if, I mean probably in this case they have tested it out and and said it works i don't know but that would be my concern uh then the other one is it takes quite a bit of electricity to put the electromagnets so i don't know if that is less than what the servo eats up so that Mm. could be a concern as well so does your receiver battery hold up during a main I can't remember if they said on the uh, sort of description of the of the product that if that that had been taken into account. I don't know which one is more efficient, uh, electromagnet or a servo. Right. Um, I wonder how you I could mean, uh, yeah. adjust bias. I wonder if you just go in and program. Yeah. So there yeah. is. So the way it works is there's a, a motherboard basically, mm-hmm. and with that you can program it. So you can program the strength of the brake, kind of like an ESC basically. So you program the strength of the brake and because the rear brake and the front brake are individual units, you can tune how much the bias is. So you can just put it on your phone. They had an app. So you can just say 60 front or 30 rear or Mm, whatever, like you can adjust it on an app. Then you can adjust the strength of the brake in an app and you can also adjust the curve of the brake. So you you don't have that sort of uh, on and off brake. You can have a curve of it. You can have, um, I think they even had um, um, frequency of the brake. So with mm. an electromagnet, you can sort of have mm. a little bit more vibration in it or something like that. I don't know if they have that, but 10 scale cars have that with the electric motors. I don't know if you have the same with this. One thing I sort of thought was a bit that I didn't like was the, the, the ESC or the motherboard, whatever you want to call it, that seemed quite big uh some cars definitely won't be fitting that into the sort of radio box and leaving that out uh that is ooh, i don't i wouldn't do that if it was like a huge a very dusty or especially a wet weather race 
so that th those would be concerns as well uh overall it seems really cool the fact that the bias the adjust of bias is so easy is very good and the weight savings are very good uh so yeah so uh, i like to see just see as people try it now see how it works get some get some thoughts of people i like to obviously try it myself but i don't know i don't know well he'll be at silver state do it. yeah you you so should interview I'll, matt silver state i will i will i'll go some, up and see him i yeah. will i will also be seeing if any of the fifth scale cars will be using it as well because yeah. he says this is for fifth scale that's what i'm really excited about at silver state to be honest is gonna watch some fifth scale. Uh, so i'm yeah. excited to see this if it works it works oh, yeah uh, and well one last thing i want to say is if mar and f rules don't allow this device so that's a bummer mm. because the rules say you're only allowed a receiver steering servo throttle servo and uh, a battery and then a switch so those are mm. the only allowed electrical components in the car so this like those rules yeah it's illegal by these rules so that's unfortunate perhaps those rules could be modified i don't know uh u.s races there's no issues obviously because they don't really have rules that mm -hmm. like silver state dnc these these events don't use rules that way well they have tech so they might be an issue there but i get i get what you're yeah saying. but i mean they don't but this is don't if this works then that. then yeah if mars they tech for like to yeah. Use it. but yeah but i mean joey's races tech for fuel and and width and weight and stuff like that but i don't think they tech for everything in a rule book like what if mar and f for the rule book is quite quite uh goes quite deep on stuff all right uh so yeah i don't know i mean but i would i'd like to see more of it i just want to see i think it's a good idea but yeah yeah this might lead to fuel injection one day yeah all right next yeah. question is from chris to and it's about why you're all making enemies perhaps give some love to dave and joey take one element from each big race i actually thought about this question so we're gonna attack this real quick so it basically said like make up your dream race using one element from a lot of the big main races so this is what i came up with i came up with i'd use pmb's show like this show mm -hmm. not the monsters yeah. and stuff but the show combined with uh with the stadium of the southern nationals i think for the event and the track guy who does the southern nationals like the older track guy who done it before the elevation that type of track i want that type of track combined with the prestige of dnc the international allure of neo and then with the professionalism and amateur classes like RCGP. And then the, I wanted to have the prestige of also being like a world championship. So it has to be like IFMAR and those races. Yeah. Those and the track point. builder right. doesn't, yeah. doesn't have to be either one. I, if, if I was to get somebody to do it, I get that guy who built this, the first, yeah. um, the, the, southern that's track because i just like the way that he does his stuff so that would be my ultimate race right there you go real quick max what would you use yeah so i think i agree with a lot of those points i think i've said this for i don't know how long probably for two years now uh that pnb the they should call it an rc festival and i think i saw dave or i don't know if they it was an official post but they call it like a pnb and it's an RC festival or something like that. So they've definitely listened and <laughs> listened to the podcast. And and that is what is great about PMB. And they should embrace it more. They should like they do it well. Like the show, like the driver intros are nice, the fire fire stuff, the podium, the monster stuff. I All right, love so we're that. gonna use so you drum. agree if the show from PMB. Yeah. And so have that... that have have that as a sort of a festival style that's something dave does really well and that's something he should embrace even more i think so that's something from dave uh, and race time um joey's race is what what he it's more of a the prestige as you said uh but i do have to say i do love love his tracks i think he I do he's, too. he does the best track so i'd like him to have the track 
Now the hard part is where do I want this race to be at? So if if it was just like no oh, concerns on travel. Sorry, I forgot to add location of Silver State. So I want it to be where the where Silver State. Yeah, is. in Vegas. Yeah, Vegas could be good, but I don't like the dirt at Silver State. Well, it would so, be the the dirt from Southern Nationals. It would be that track. Okay. Okay. So, so we're, we're just going, having this imaginary okay. race. You know. I I won't I won't go imaginary. I will go real life so no we're taking what little I wish... bits of pieces from each race yeah, yeah. And making but I, I, I i i'll try to make this that someone could one when they have this race so you'd have that sort of all the like cool stuff like the festival rocket car jump stuff like this that'd be from race time joey would have that sort of his track and the sort of prestige that the dirt brand bring, brings to events and you have it at the silver state facility but he bring in his own dirt which would be similar dirt as the as sort of i really liked uh, when he was in arizona. in uh, arizona so that type of dirt i love that and uh, then you run an rcgp rc2 race format where you have you have sort of more track time people can enjoy it and you have the pro class of rcgp uh those are in my opinion the best best combination of an event so because right now with rcgp similar. yeah right, right right now what rcgp lacks is sort of the heritage because it's so new people are sort of getting sort of no know, knowing it it doesn't have that sort of many years of continuity in my opinion what dave's races and race time events lack is sort of a program or a proper structure they are just like like nice festival event but then the racing it's just whatever it ha might happen and then what joey lacks in my opinion is just that like his races are just so big and it's it's more structured than dave's events but that is sort of still an issue with him so sort of add oh, the see, structure dave's races are trying to get as it, like pmb is big but it's done in three days so that's why it attracts a lot of people when they did go yeah. to four days it kind of it dropped on entries i do like yeah i do like dnc having to separate separate nitro and electric and druggy days i like yeah. that it makes the race longer but yeah i get yeah. it but those, those are but all I'm things not, we kind of yeah. agree on 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 yeah. what will make an ultimate race yeah. i would say but i That's i still gotta say this because this is an argument people say always or oh, why can't there be different races yes there can be and there should be uh, as i said i'm fine with pnb in the pnb being the way it is but i think there ought to be more space for races and formats like ams was which is pretty much uh what rc2 class was like so that is in my opinion that that's the best way to go i'm fine with pnb and having 24-hour practice but i don't want that to be the norm you know that's my point because right now that is the norm and it's an odd race out when it's when people exactly. actually get tracked. I know out. what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Great question, Chris Tradu. Benjamin yeah. James, how do you feel about Nitro Offer trying to a dual moto moto format, double mains essentially, instead of a long single main? I like it. They do it at RCGP, two 15 minute races. It's exciting. But mm -hmm. I also like the 60 minute mains. But for yeah, promotion wise and for excitement, the two 15 minute mains with one pit, great. Yeah, I I, I'd have to agree. I do like two moto mains, but then on the other hand, I have to say the sort of excitement and the build up there, it just, it just isn't, it isn't, isn't the same as when you have a single 45 minute or 60 minute main. I gotta be honest though. I'm not a huge fan of 60 minute mains. I, mm. I personally prefer 45 minutes because okay. 60 you're starting to push like a lot of times people break in the last 15 when it's a 60 minute main and that in my opinion sucks a bit okay i get it it's an endurance main but i think 45 is sort of the perfect because you have you have a lot of but basically it's two two semi-finals put together it's like 20 minute semi and, and then you have a 45 minute main so i think that is the perfect length for a main and i i don't know if that is what i'm used to but every time I run a 60 minute main, it's to, in my opinion, it's a bit too long. But I get when, for example, when RCGP do it, it's the endurance aspect of it. So that's different. But they have the sprint like and they have the mains. other end. Yeah. 
I like. I mean, it. and yeah, people most likely will disagree. Like Degani loves sixty minute mains, I like so people will disagree with me on that. Probably at least some people do. But I think I like forty five minute mains a lot, and yeah. like something like sort of Euros, like the like you have the semis. There's always a few surprises. Then sort of dust settles down, and then you have the break, and then the junior main and the forties main, and then it builds up. It's like these are the guys. Forty five minutes. Let's see who's best. So that is like I think that is hard to beat. Sort of that build up. It's almost impossible to beat with any other format. Even like ten scale when you have three mains, the sort of you sort of lose the build up of it. It's like main, then you wait, then the main, and then the last main, someone might have actually already won it. So that's sort of what I don't like about split mains, but they definitely do have a place, and I really like the fifteen. Uh, minute mains of or sprint mains of RCGP when I ran it in 2019, and there definitely is space for mains like that. But the sort of uh, build up and the excitement of a 45 minute single main is is hard to beat. So, yeah. See, I like them both. This is a question. I, I just I can't. I like them both. Dom Tranquil. I don't know his name, real name, but that's what he goes on. Why are national, international organizations so reluctant to change? The qualifying format to somewhat more excited real quick max uh it's because there's for example efra there's i don't know how many countries like probably 30 countries who get to decide about stuff when they have to vote mm -hmm. so and if i don't know if they do some stuff they do that they need an on unanimous vote but some stuff they do that they need just a majority i, I think but yeah trying to get 30 countries to agree to doing one thing and then like you just have one meeting a year obviously you have smaller meetings like for in the efra federation itself but mm -hmm. it's so much harder to change stuff when it's that slow mm -hmm. and then with roar almost everyone is a volunteer there's only a few guys who get paid and they've been there forever so they are not like wanting to change stuff anymore because that's like they've done it forever so there, you know, in Roar, there aren't really any forces trying to change stuff. In Efra, there are, mm -hmm. but then there's so many uh, differing opinions. So there isn't the one clear force trying to move stuff forward. And that's why it's really slow. And, yeah. it, and I've said this before, but we shouldn't hold Efra and Roar and Ifmar to, to them to change stuff because they never will change stuff because that their job is to keep uh stability and and heritage uh of of this sport who change stuff are organizations like rcgp or the dirt or race time they are the ones who will try to push the envelope to get new stuff get people more excited sadly a lot of these organizations have not worked in the way of making racing better for people rather making their own event just bigger which i i mean i guess it's fine but i'd like to see sort of rc being more fun for everyone so we should have like someone like rcgp and dirt and race time and and D dxr or neo what it used to be those are the ones who should be pushing the pushing the envelope and then efra is the one who says okay these guys are doing a good job let's take something from them or let's work together that's what i think it should be and it should have always been but it just never went that way. Got you. The super tanker that are the federations, when they do decide to turn, it still takes them 120 miles to turn. So, yeah, yeah it's exactly. always going to be that slow. Simple as that. All right. We have a Discord question. Hey, guys. Jay Kranz. As someone who was out of the hobby for an extended period and recently got back into eight-scale racing, it seems like J Concepts is the really dominating the tire game, at least here in the US, at a big race level. But I'm curious your thoughts on how much of it is really the tire product versus the fact that they have majority of top racers in their stable. In other words, even though the, that they appears to be the best, would a Mayfield Fend still be winning at the same clip with the same clip? Winning at the same clip with another brand, in your opinions. Well, I think, uh, real quick, I think when ProLine went to Horizon, that like J Concepts just went where ProLine probably used to be, mm -hmm. 
back in that day. So I would say that right now, JC is the number one tire brand in RC. It's doing well on its East Coast races. It's holding its own out on the West Coast, which is predominantly dominated by <clears throat> Proline and AKA. It does well in the Midwest. The only place that we don't really see J Concepts doing really big in is probably Europe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Compared to really. Proline, AKA, and the other tire brands. Throw in yeah. hot races now involved. Then you have tire other tire brands, these smaller brands like like Lug, like TZO, Seismic, all these tires trying to get a little piece. But right now, yeah, J Concepts has has probably the best one of the best products, has some of the best drivers, Mayfield, Fenn, Born Horse, and they just have a plethora of tires and compounds to go to compared to other races and and at some races they're just really good like at these indoor races in the southeast this is like where j concepts is always going to be probably the best tire that's just my opinion yeah yeah j concepts definitely is was already a lot better in the east coast a, a few years back but they have in my opinion at least since when i ran them i started running them in 2018 and ran until 2019 so two years and at that time, they were really good at all tracks except for hard, packed, and dry. Uh, ne not necessarily even high grip. Sometimes they were good. Like if it was really high grip, it was good. But when it was sort of mid grip, dry, and hard packed, that's when they really struggled. I don't know if they have solved it. I, I haven't seen them release much more new compounds or, they, I mean, they have the aquas, but I don't think they use that for dry tracks really. Uh, so, and no new threads really for that condition blockers. Yes. But I, even then they, when I tried them, I never really liked them that much reflex is really good, but then again, it doesn't last when it's hard packed and dry. So they do have a sort of, a a weak spot J concepts, but when you go to American tracks, there are really not many tracks, which are that way. Whereas compared to Southern Europe or Central Europe, even almost all tracks are that way. So that's why the disparity between Europe and America in J concepts. Hot Race is sort of a brand who has managed to now get the feel for both. I believe when Pavidis moved to Hot Race, they now have the AKA compounds uh, for the soft compounds, which they use in America, for example, like DNC. David really liked Hot Race. Um, he's free to run anything he wants to, but he still runs hot race at DNC. Uh, I don't know about Silver State and tracks like, tra tra like that, but definitely the West Coast dirt, uh, the hot race works really well. And uh, hot race is really, really good on like medium grip, uh, hard pack, dry track. So in my mind, uh, Hot Race and J Concepts are the ones sort of battling for which is the number one when you take into account Europe and the world. Obviously, like in America, J Concepts has lots of fast team drivers, so they have good results and they work really well on a lot of these tracks. Now, it's like what you said about Proline, like same happened to AK. AK was the best in like from like, let's say 2010 until 2013, 14. AK was the best. But then when Proline came out with their um, long wear compounds, the X compounds, and the Fugitive especially, that worked really well on those high grip tracks. Then AK fell back quite a bit. I don't know, when I was running AK at the time, it felt like the, also their own compounds went to worse. So I don't know if they switched something around, but it felt like just the old tires worked better than the new tires. I don't know if that was just placebo or what it was. But then like Proline was the dominant tire from like 2014 up until 2016. I mean, yeah, David won the Worlds with AK in 2016, but you have to take into account this was a low grip track, which AK still worked pretty well at and on water as well. So AK was good then. Since then, AK has been better. Like Ungara has been doing really well. AK has their new long work compounds that do work well. Um, Proline has since fell back because I don't know, I don't really know if they had money issues or they or horizon just made them really good offer but especially now when they moved to horizon in my opinion it has went back a bit uh it was really good up until like 20 
I'd say like 2017, 18, I felt ProLine was still one of the best or the best brand overall. But I think now AK and ProLine are a bit back compared to J Concept. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, got some Instagram questions. We've got three, and then I think that's it. Uh, Brandon Hong. Brandon Hong 8. I don't know. How often do nitro engine bearings need to be replaced? Can you tell by sound or feel when it's time? Thanks. Sound and feel. And it feels a little yeah. bit gritty in there. It's time to change them. So the best way to check for this is to uh, disassemble the engine. Just like take everything out and then just with a finger. The rear bearing you can actually hear if the engine has this sort of... Uh, a little bit i don't know what you would call it a little bit of a sort of a a wearing noise it, like, yeah it, it's i don't know what you're talking about it's i don't know what the word for it would be but it's not a rattle or anything like this it still runs fine but there's just a little bit sort of a a, a metallic noise in the end yeah it's, that's it's like, that's when i i it's wearing that's the only word i can yeah, like whir, yeah like yeah and then yeah so, but that's when you know the rear bearing is gone. The front bearing is the easiest way to see is just if it leaks. Like if you see any leak in the sort of front part of the engine, that's you know front bearings at going or gone. Or if it's a brand new bearing, it might leak a bit because there's a lot of oil in it. Um, but yeah, generally rear bearings, depending on what fuel you run, uh, how well do you take care of your engines and how much dirt passes through your engine. So. The more you change your air filter, the less you have to change your rear bearing. And the better fuel you use, the less you have to change your rear bearing. And for me, I mean, I've ran my rear rings for a long, long time now. I don't even know. I switched the front bearing around now and then. If you run like stock OS bearings, those suck. Uh, I don't know if Reds has changed their bearings, but those old ones used to suck as well. They were actually the same bearings that OS used. So a lot of these brands use very bad front bearings as stock. And I ran... Uh, a different one. I can't remember what it was, but it's not even an RC one. It's an industrial one, and it works really well. Uh, it lasts virtually forever, and the idle is better. And yeah, I I think I I don't know. I don't have any info. But I just have a bunch of them in my my bag, and I use them when I need a new one. Magnus SRX seven. As Europe as Europe's going down on the percentage of nitro. A quick guide to what needs to be done to get running nice would be great. I know what I will do, but there are many people that don't. Have you gave, gave any thought to this yet, Max? Yeah, well, for me, what I did was uh, with the 25% fuel, I used to run a, uh, a, a heavier flywheel. So obviously I, that's gone. Now I, I run a lighter flywheel with 12% fuel. Um, this Some people might think this is uh, sort of... Uh, the opposite of what you should do but i went from running a p4 plug with 25 percent nitro to running a p3 plug with the 12 percent nitro and this is to increase sort of trust in the idle some people say oh you have to go to a p4 because the fuel burns uh the nitro burns quicker so you don't need as much uh, lighting from the plug but I think going to P3 gives you much more stability of idle. So your tune, tuning range is more free. If you're on a P4 with the 12% fuel, generally you end up having a lot of issues with having a too high idle so that you just don't flame out. And th that's what I, at least I felt. Uh, something uh, I don't do, but a few of my uh, friends do this, they, when they run 25% fuel, they put a shim, uh, on the engine so they raise the the plug a bit uh just because the sort of um what are long stroke os engines have so much power mm -hmm. so then when they went to 12 percent fuel they took that off uh took i don't shim have off. a shim yeah so oh, more compression no no took a shim off when they okay, went to okay. 12 percent. but when they run 25 they add an extra shim from stock okay but I don't do that, so I didn't do anything about it, and it worked fine for me. Now, the issue I had was when it got hot, so above, let's say, between 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, that's when I started having issues, which is, I don't know if I should have gone to a bigger um, uh, Venturi, 
or what I should have done. Should I have even more compression then? Just like so I can have more power because obviously hotter air, less oxygen. Uh, so yeah, you need to compensate for something. Mm -hmm. So I need to test this out again next summer, but bigger Venturi, uh, more compression. I'll try, try that out in the hot temps. But when it's below 25, only thing I needed to do was went from P4 to P3 plug and uh, then just tune it again. You had to tighten the screws a bit. It was quite a drastic difference, actually. But it, for me, I, it works straight out like that. So that's How about scooping thought. the head, the glow plug head to get more compression? That's what my buddy did her. This was GT, yeah, around 16%. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not that into engine tuning, so I, right. I don't know really that I couldn't explain them. Perhaps someone else could be better with that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really have any, I, I don't know how that would work. Interesting. It probably Interesting. could be better that way, but I don't know. I think this is where engine modific modific modifiers are going to earn their keep. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the thing is, though, that I, I mean, I ran two of the nationals with 12%. Every time when it was below 25 degrees Celsius, I actually was same speed uh, than with 25% fuel, uh, but I had better mileage. Uh, when it was a really, really high speed track, I, yeah, then you benefit from the 25. It has a bit more power, obviously. But the smaller tracks, I was sometimes even faster with the 12% because it has less bottom end. So you get less mm -hmm. wheel spin. You have more mm -hmm. drive out of corner. Mm -hmm. okay. Got you. Got you. All right. Good question. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to come. I think now uh, the world's yeah. going to be done on 12%, it looks like. Or at least yeah, the Euros yeah, are. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. I don't know, like, yeah. Some guys are going to have issues. That's for sure. That's going to be, it's going to be, a, it's yeah, going to be madness. It's, yeah, I I really am very disappointed at Efra for not trying to sort something out for you so we could use 25. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's like the spec tire. Everybody's yeah. got to use it. And also, please, uh, if you are an engine tuning guy and yeah, you let us know. are in the Discord, uh, please go to my sort of Ask Arrogant Max <laughs> a channel. Please uh, give your thoughts on what you have done, if you have run. Uh, or even like on Facebook PM PM us because I I'd like to know definitely and share yeah. it with with our listeners. We got one more question and then we're gonna go on to our main interview with Ryan Lutz and this is another Instagram question. Check it pass five oh three. What would you buy with the twenty k from Kia King of the Streets Drag Race? Well, what would you buy, Max, if you had twenty k from that race right now? I'd I buy know. me another RC boat. Cars. I'd go on holiday somewhere and take and my take RC my cars with me and then just... No, I I go to Colombia. I take my RC. wife to Colombia. She wants to go to <laughs> Colombia. So we okay. get on there for a vacation. And then I'll come back and yeah. buy some materials to build a house to start for my house. But I definitely got a new RC boat. A Rico Marine catamaran. Yeah. I'd go right, somewhere uh, where there isn't a foot of snow. <laughs> yeah he goes and also he goes do you think male egos are hurt a little more when losing to a female competitor or does rc in general somewhat level the playing field since this hobby relies on so many things going right i.e electronics pit stop skills and not just a person's physical attributes i think i think men still get upset uh, oh 100 percent. male male especially older males are really fragile their egos get deflated and then when something happens like a young kid beats them or a woman yeah, beats a them or whatever yeah. yeah they they get hurt and they like they are fragile beings so. i would have to ask katie carmandy i'm gonna have her on as a guest uh and i love her motto race like a girl don't give an inch and i think we talked about this on the last podcast like this is the great thing about rc is that physical attributes don't really matter you know, yeah. they don't matter. And it's about time we start seeing some females getting up her and kicking ass. And I hope we continue to see more females. There's no reason why we yeah. can't have a female world champion in RC. There's absolutely no reason besides yeah. that they don't want to be in a sport filled with like weirdos like us. That's the only reason I could see it. So uh, definitely. 
Definitely. So more females race. Whoa, everybody. All right, remember, hashtag RC is for everybody. All right, Max, I think that's enough for our questions. Uh, I'm going to go on to our interview with Ryan Lutz. It was a great chat with him, catch up with him. Uh, I learned something new about the meaning of AKA. Learned how he almost was completely out of RC at some point. So it's good that he's back. And then, uh, oh. oops, played that by mistake. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna edit that at all. Uh, see, even though after 182 episodes, we still make mistakes. Uh, so, with that said, Max, I'm gonna bring you back for the conclusion. Thank you for the questions. It seems like people really are enjoying the questions. That we have people say that it's really helped them. So I know you go really science mode in them, and that's great because I think this is your favorite part of the podcast. And thank you to everybody that sent us questions. We greatly appreciate it. And sometimes we have to kind of be careful because we can spend like a, a long time answering them. So we have to select some as well because yeah. a lot of them are repetitive. All right, Max. Uh, thank, and also remember, guys, don't forget to go check out Beach RC. Thank you for all their support. Check them out at PNB. And um, yeah, sweet. Uh, use that affiliate link. It really helps us out a lot. Please. We, are, we, we greatly appreciate it. We got a little slice of that. Max, see you later for the conclusion. Started to talk to the tallest man in RC, Mr. Ryan Lutz. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC. Excellence in engineering. Hashtag techno takeover. Joining me this week is a, a gentleman that needs no introduction. If you don't know who he is, he not only is the tallest person in RC, he's also one of the nicest persons in RC. I've gotten to know him uh, pretty well over the years. He's always got a smile. He always has time for me. I don't know how he does it, but um, welcome, Mr. Ryan Lutz. How are you? Keenan, I'm doing great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. I know you're getting ready for PMB, which is this weekend we're recording. Uh, I believe this is Tuesday before PMB. So thank you for your time. I know you have a lot of work to do, uh, getting your stuff ready. I know you're a busy yeah. family man. How are the family doing? Uh, we're hanging in there. Uh, okay. Luckily, it's the end of winter coming up, so that should help a little bit, I think. Um, but overall, they're doing pretty well. Okay, good, good. Is it starting? To, is the snow starting to melt? Is it warming up there? Yeah, today's actually 60s. I uh, haven't had snow for a couple of days. <laughs> it, like, we'll get a, a quick little dusting of snow, and then it'll go away the next day. So that's kind of the, the end of spring. Yeah, it was like 95 here yesterday. <laughs> oh, man. Don't, don't the, tell my wife. The heat is coming. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, so thank you for coming on. Um, I saw you at DNC. You look very happy. Congratulations. I think you had a very good DNC, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you've had a, a very good showing with your new cars, the Kyosho cars. Something I think I think you should have made. I thought this move was coming back in 2020. Right. I th was it 2021 when you when you left from Nemo and went to WRC? I think 2020. Was it? Yeah, because yeah. Well, yeah. I can't remember. I think it was going to I ran 2021. 2021 with WRC. So I guess it was right. yeah, end of 2020 into 2021. Yeah. Right. I thought that this was the move that she was going to make then. I guess it didn't work out. Kyosho kind of, we know we, we was wondering what Kyosho was going to do. They're, obviously, they're strong in Asia and Europe, but in mm -hmm. America was like nobody was at the helm, it seemed like. But there were still people running the cars. Yeah. They have a lot of loyal people that have been running the car even since I was there as team manager 15 years ago. Really? Like Francis yeah. Ortiz, who lives here. <laughs> exactly. Even though we don't have a, car, a track, he will be running Kyosho forever. Right, exactly. Um, so it's when, when this news came out, I think for me it was, you know, as, as excited as I was for Rana Falk joining Mayako, I was mm -hmm. really happy and excited for this news. For me. Truly, I was. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I was excited too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you shocked everybody too because... You know, I heard all these rumors. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I had heard that you was probably on your way out of RC full time. Maybe mm -hmm. he was looking for a half, uh, like part time gig. And I was like, I, I we said it repeatedly on the podcast. RC wouldn't be the same without you in it. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Was was it that close for you? Was it almost over for you? 
it abso professional RC guy? absolutely was. It seemed like that's the way it was going at the time. Uh, there wasn't, you know, the market's getting tougher in a way, and there wasn't a lot of options out there to be able to make a, a career out of it still. And like the hard part was, you know, I still have the Alpha brand that I'm with Lutz RC that I sell. And it's like, I didn't want to have to give up that or no longer support them in that way. So just trying to find that the right chassis fit and making sure all the other support sponsors were going to be able to stay on board and were interested in staying on board. Uh, that was all up in the air for a, a, right up until the end of the year. So I'm glad it all came together. That's not a good way to live though. Honestly, no. that's, it's very yeah. stressful. Yeah. People don't get this part of you guys career. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, I got a little taste of it this year. The sponsors, you know, you worry if they're going to stay on and stuff yeah. like that. So I get it. And your livelihood depends on this. So how did the how did the whole Kyosho thing come about? Was it something that was on the table all, on, all along? Or did it just come out like, hey, we got something for you? No, actually, about two years ago, um, Fatoshi, who's the main guy at Kyosho America, reached out to me asking if I was interested. And at the time, I was going to go through my second year with Nemo. And so I said, you know, right now I, I have a deal going on, but I appreciate you reaching out again. Because he was there when I came to work for Kyosho back in 2006. So I've known him for a long time. And he always liked having me there and always wanted me back in a way. So, so then this year, it got down to the wire and I kind of sent him a reverse message. I said from my end, I'm like, are you guys open to having me back, you know? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, timing's, per timing's perfect, so. Wow, is that the gentleman that I met at DNC, the tall yes. Japanese gentleman? Yes, seems yes. Okay, very, seems like a very nice gentleman. Yeah, very. Uh, so, so, I mean, like, yeah, it, it kind of, we're kind of back to where this all started, where you kind of started out as a team manager mm -hmm. and grew your yourself and your brand. And a lot of people still, rem like you said, remember you from this time. Right. Uh, a little different now. You know what I mean? Uh, before Coyote, when you was with Kyosha was still, I'm, I don't mean this in any disrespect, but it was still no. a very powerhouse uh, car in the RC yeah. industry, especially in America. You know what yeah. I mean? Not as, not to that level anymore, just because it's just, you know, just not been a popular choice for the last five or six years, I would say. Right. Yeah. Back then, especially there's only still, you know, three or four primary eight scale brands. And, you know, now we have a ton, a ton more. So the, the competition is deeper, the, the pie is smaller, as you would say. And for a long time, I think the currency exchange was a big problem and the, the car was more expensive than everybody else. I think actually right now that's actually kind of reversing and I the know. Kyosho is actually being more affordable than most of the other I cars. I know, it's so, crazy. Whoever would yeah. have thought that. So it's interesting how it all, the world goes around and we'll see how it all goes going forward. But well, they have pedigree, and you can't they beat do. their pedigree. No, uh, they have the, the you, history and the, the legacy, and they still make a great product. You yeah. know, just building it again, I was like, man, the quality is so nice. Yeah, Really? So, yeah, let's talk about the cars. I mean, how is this? How are you liking them? Um, you seem to – you did pretty well at SIC. I, I, don't, I should have results up here, but I don't. Uh, I think you finished in the top five or just outside of the top five at SIC. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I, I really don't remember my results much anymore either. Okay. I know SIC was a bit of a struggle. I hadn't had much time at all on the cars. Mm -hmm. And what I learned going out between SIC and DNC, I went out to uh, the Paris track to practice for a couple of days. And what I learned there would have definitely translated to making my result better at SIC. So I know I've learned a lot since then. So it's just going to keep getting better, I think. And then your epic, epic e-buggy final with yeah, Rana fun. Falk. Oh my gosh, you guys gave us some of the most exciting racing. I, I was like, you guys, when you was coming over that triple triple and you guys were exactly yeah. like this. I said, you can't get closer racing without touching somebody. And at that point, I was like, man, if either of these guys win, I'll be happy. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> I mean, you was it was such a good race between you guys. And it looked like you had fun. And when you made that mistake, I was just like, ah, oh, we got robbed of a very good, because I saw you coming. Mm -hmm. I was like, Rana Falk's out front and Lutz, and Lutz is coming on the hunt. Like, and I just saw you catching them up and I was like, wow. And like, you was fast all weekend at DNC. Like really, a lot of people were happy for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, the cars were working well. I mean, fortunately, I think going out there a couple of weeks prior to practice was a, a big help for me to get familiar with the track a little bit and then just to get familiar with the cars again. And 
you know, learn the setup and what I need to do with them. So I think going forward, just what I learned at that practice was just so huge for me just to learn the cars. And I think it'll apply to every race I go to moving forward. Yeah. And not, and not only that, but also having two, like, I think you, what, you got two years on this contract. Yeah. Roughly. So yeah. you have two years where you're, you're straight, like, you know, don't have to worry about that. Nothing for, well, you know, don't have to worry too much. You can focus yeah, yeah. on your racing. I, I foresee maybe, uh, I know you said that's not your role right now, but I, I know as you get older, you're doing the alpha brand. I just foresee you kind of falling back into the role that you did in the beginning to an extent in the coming years, because I can't see anybody better at doing that job, to be honest. So I'm uh, like, man, like honestly, and I mean this, and I think even Joseph and, and Max and all we guys said, like, this is like the best move that could have happened for you. Yeah. And it's no disrespect to Nemo. It's no disrespect to WRC. I just think for you personally, this is this was the best move for you in a long time. Yeah, I think it'll definitely work out really well, and hopefully, I get to prove it on the, some podiums coming up. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's let's get you up there yeah. on the podiums and and show everybody that age doesn't matter That's at right. all. Uh, but very, the, what what do you notice that are different from the cars back when you was running? I know it's a lot different. But I don't, I don't remember stuff. It's like, I can't even remember like tracks that I just ran on. If you asked me to kind of even tell you what the layout at DNC looked like, I probably couldn't even do the whole thing. You get no, I, That's what I drive, I old. drive in my moment. I drive in the moment. It's called. So instead of having like things memorized and remembering what I did per se, it just, mm -hmm. I adapt to the situation that's at hand at that moment. And I just drive what needs to be driven at that time. It's why I'm not great at downsiding jumps all the time because I don't have like a, I'm pulling half throttle on this jump and like, I know exactly where I do it. Every time's different. One time I might approach it full throttle. The next time I'm like a quarter throttle and then gas it. I, I'm random in that way. Yeah. So will you be running e-truggy at the PMB? Not at PMB, no. Okay. I think they are planning on making one. And right. so maybe they'll have it ready for the ENATs. Good. We'll it's a popular class. It's definitely growing. growing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. predict there's going to be a hundred plus at PMB yeah, be, this week. That'd be crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's talk about alpha. Alpha's back. Uh, you're growing that. I, I see a lot of old school guys that really liked alpha back in the day. They're happy to have you back on board. Um, yeah. My buddy, the coach is a diehard alpha fan. Lots of people that used to run them. How's that going? It's going pretty good overall. You know, unfortunately my result at the last race, didn't show that because all the practice that I have been able to do, you know, it's putting time on the engines and kind of wearing them out. <laughs> and so it kind of resulted in a couple of flame outs in the mains, which was unfortunate, but I blame that on me. I had to run the same engine in both cars all weekend. Just that's where the situation led to. Are you just switching engines? Yeah. The nationals? Yeah. I haven't had time to get stuff ready. You know, we don't have the good weather here. Don't have anywhere to really go break stuff in and just didn't, haven't had the time. Right. The time's all been spent, you know, working on the cars and making sure I'm dialed in on the cars. So got you. I got to put the whole program together now and I'm sure I'll be able to show that they're working really well moving forward. Sweet. I mean, yeah. And then I like, I see like, that's why I was like, when you was like, I said, you still got alpha, but you might be mm -hmm. out. I was like, how's this going to work? So I think even yeah. this just falls in just in part, imperfect for you, man. I'm I, I, like, I can't say it enough. I'm super happy for you. Yeah. Super now, there's, happy for you. Those are awesome people. Uh, the alpha team over there. You know, I've been to the factory five or six times, you know, about five or six years ago right. when went there like every year once or twice for a race and would visit the factory and whatnot and just great people so glad to be a part of that again helping them you know move the product here in the u.s sweet sweet all right uh let's talk about your social media your um I'm, oh by the way how can anybody if they want to get in touch or they want to get some alpha engines how can they do that by the way so yeah just all let's rc.com so okay. let's rc.com is a, a grouping of my blog that I recap every race that I go to. I kind of share like what tires I've ran throughout the weekend. So whenever people the next year want to go to one of the bigger races that I've been to, they can go and see what tires I ran for the AKA because I've been with AKA since the first day they started. So it gives a good baseline for them. Really? And yeah, since, since the day they started and they actually started in Kyosho, we can, we can touch on that That's store true. if you want to. Yeah, we can. But um, I got that blog, and then I got some Kyosho tips. I, I did a spring chart, measured all the springs and the rates, so any of the Kyosho drivers that want to see where the springs line up, actually rate-wise compared to each other, that's all on there. And then I have, obviously, the, the web store, so I have all the alpha products, and I also often sell the, the SmartCom headsets that people use, so I import and sell those as well. 
I'm actually out of stock right now. They had a material shortage and we're out of them. So I just ordered a new batch. They just came back in. So I should have them again shortly. Dude, you're busy. Yeah. How are you shipping all this stuff out? And, and like, <laughs> well, I, I just do it during the day, you know, in the mornings. Right. I don't, it's not a ton of orders, but, and then right. when I'm gone, my wife takes care of it all for me. You said, let's touch on the whole AKA Kyosho thing. We did, we did, we do forget that. I think this did come about with Kyosho in the beginning with AKA. Let's touch on that. Yeah. So at the time, like Joel Johnson was the president of Kyosho America and he brought on Gil Losey and his Gil had left Losey at the time. <laughs> so he brought on Gil Losey Jr. and Mark Pavitas and they were tasked with creating a new product. And so they chose tires and AKA means Aka or it's pronounced Aka in, Jap in Japanese. That means red and Kyosho is red, red army. No. So that's where the name came from. So that's why it was really? AKA that's red. Yeah. So that, so that was the first product they made. They made the uh, city blocks and I beams and grid irons and all the first pre mounts we'd go in Kyosho and they would get the boxes in and, we go to the back warehouse after work and glue up pre-mounts. Uh, any of the employees that wanted to, we could take a case home and glue them up for a little bit of extra money. So Really? I did yeah. not know that. You know what? Yeah. The Spanish guys have been saying the name right all this time. They say Aka. Yeah. It's really Aka. Really? Japanese Japanese for red. Yeah. Hey, so how I got to ask, how much did you get for gluing up a box of tires back then? Was I think it was a if we did a whole case, it was 90 bucks. How long did it take you to do a case? Do you remember? I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of tires, though. It was like ninety tires, I think, something like that. Were you like Might QC'd on your on your gluing skills? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't think I don't think uh, we see drivers doing that anymore, though. You know what I mean? Like going no. in the back, working on on like you heard when Drake talks about with the triple XNT. And they mm -hmm. had to go in there and do all that work to the carburetors or something like that. Okay. You gluing up tires in the back, you know, people don't do that no more. It seems. Yeah. Or as drivers. Most, yeah. Most of it's all sourced out. I think. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. We forget about that sometimes that you guys had to do an actual job as well as a driver back in the day. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, that was interesting. Didn't know that. Let's talk about your social media. Uh, you, you've been killing on, on that. You've had multiple, uh, of your onboard cams go viral, you know, which has been great. Mm -hmm. How, how's that been for you? Is, has it helped get more spotlight on you? Um, do you think it has got more spotlight on our industry as a whole? And, uh, if not, it, can we use this in combination with other things to help promote our, our sport and our hobby? Yeah, I think it does. You know, I think anymore i think our rc in general as a hobby aspect has grown more than it ever has you know with the drag racing and the, the fpv drones and everything so people know about rc everywhere mm -hmm. it's just we're trying to get them into this little segment of off-road so racing hard. you know and that's, so hard it's different it's a it's a time consuming and it's expensive and but i think the the showing the onboard just shows what these cars are going through and it's just amazing to see it's like everybody thinks the videos are sped up and they're not at all. The only thing I do in them is slow them down actually on some spots to, sh to show action, but it's just amazing because you figure scale, they're going over 300 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So, and that looks like I it mean, when you're watching it, it's just so fast. I know even you, if, if you didn't know and watch this like we did, we would think it was sped up as well. Yeah. But it's been some amazing footage. What was the biggest one? I think um, it was the Padova that, that... one. It was like one of the first ones I ever did. Right. It was just random. I had just got the GoPro Hero Eight when it came out, basically, mm -hmm. and went to Italy like the day after I got it, and didn't have much time. You know, the practice was limited, so I just like I put double sided tape on it and slapped it on the roof right before a practice run. Ran five minutes, and that's the video I put up. So there was like yeah. no editing on that one. It was all pre-done and people loved it. It, was, it, it did went really well. super viral, super yeah. viral. But I'm, I'm all for any of that stuff getting out there because mm -hmm. it all helps, you know, yeah. every little bit of RC content, cool RC content we can get out there. It just sh shines a spotlight on what we do because people, I think the general, like we as RC racers freak out and we're like, this is so popular. But right. in reality, in re in realistically, it's very, it's not. And it's, it's, so it's a niche of a niche of a niche. Yeah. I just wanted to grow a little bit more. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So 
what's next for you? What do we? What can we expect from Ryan Lutz this year? Uh, where will we see you traveling to? We know you're going to PMB. What will be next for you after that? After that, looks like Silver State at this time. Okay. And you know, most all the big stuff. Um, well, I guess most of the big stuff's all front loaded this year. We had you know DMC and Silver State and the Nationals already all completed and it's PMB. So pretty much a lot of the biggest races are the first four to five months. Did you like that having to getting it done early this year? A little bit getting those races out of the way? No, I mean, I'd rather have the Nationals probably in the summer. You know, yeah. it gets, gives the rest, like some people have mentioned, it kind of gives the rest of the country who haven't ran Nitro and yes. months a chance to get, you know, warmed up and everything. But as a racer but, on that schedule, you was pretty much going, he was busy. Busy, every yeah. Month or every yeah, and, the, and they're long events. That's the problem. It's like yeah. doing a bunch of events if they're four days that you're gone, it's not terrible. But when they're six, seven day trips, it makes it hard, especially for me on the family thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I think people just don't get that side of it too. It, yes, it's your job, but we all have, like, even recently, this RCG GP trip, it was only six mm -hmm. days. But, like, as soon as you get to that airport, the only thing you think about is getting back home, right? Getting to your family. Yeah. Sweet. But I all also right. plan on doing all the, you know, the um, uh, race time entertainment races. And then I'd like to do, like, LCRC, you know, hit up the big stuff around our area as well, okay. support those tracks. Yeah, I see they're having their, um, their, op their race opener this weekend as well at yeah. LCRC. Great group of people out there, Kevin and his wife. Mm -hmm. Um, All right, Kyosho, what can we expect from them this year? Obviously, how oh, I meant to ask, how is it working with Mick Craddock? Uh, he was there this past at the DNC. It was good to see him and Taro back. Yeah. I think he must be excited to have um, a, a top quality American driver like yourself as well mm -hmm. on board. How's that going for you? It's cool. I, we don't talk too often, but when we do, it's always very nice. And it's good to have somebody that has like that, that full experience from the whole Kyosho line ever since they really started, probably. He's been there forever. So it's, yeah, it's so nice to have that. Yeah. Dude, I bet I bet so many people were happy when you got this. Like I could imagine all like the Kyosho Red Army over in Europe mm -hmm. that haven't had somebody like, I mean, yes, they had CJ, but CJ wasn't racing much the last couple of years. Right. But of your caliber, to join like i i i know they were so happy i mean yes they have y'all they have Ren reno but like you know like to have that top american talent uh really what is something kyosha has kind of been missing since i would say tebow left yeah no i don't know if i was surprised in a way just the feedback i got from that return it was pretty amazing all the positive feedback from everybody so are we going to see like Kyosho like hitting it hard at these races as well? Um, not just you. I saw you had a few guys with you to help you out um, at, uh, at the DNC. DNC. Yeah, that's Jimmy, Jimmy Wright. Were. Yeah, it's Jimmy Wright and his crew that live in Southern California. And they'll probably be at Silver State as well. So we might have a decent presence at Silver State. Mm -hmm. And then we might be bringing on a, a semi good talent here shortly too. So we'll see how that comes in the next month or two. Is he an older version? Is he an older guy? I can't comment. We'll see what happens. I, I have an idea who it is. I might have. But I may it'll have, be might good. Have, yeah. It'll be good for if, me. If this is who I think so. it is, I mean, he almost won world championships. I don't know about No, I don't think that. Okay. Not him. <laughs> okay. All right. So I was just saying, no, I'm going crazy. Yeah. I, you know, I love that type of stuff. All right, man. I, I, I So is Kyosho like serious this year? Like, are they, are they going to be building their brand up here in America. Uh, are we going to see Kyosha's um, at club races and stuff like that all over the place and whatnot? I hope so. You know, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is get the, I don't know if you have to get the name back out there, but just get the presence back out there and showing that the cars are still absolutely capable of competing at the highest level. And, you know, that can translate to the club level as well. Uh, the pro the quality of the product is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Kyosho is really busy at the moment. They're actually moving their headquarters, Kyosho America, from Southern California to Dallas area. Mm. So that's actually happening as we speak. So they're actually closed down for a couple of weeks right now to do that transition. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's uh, a lot of people moving to, to Texas. Yeah. It seems like from Most, California. you know, all the companies were located in Southern California. And then a lot of them have either at least moved their warehouses out of Southern California or a lot of them are moving the whole operation out. Really interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting news. Well, that's good to see. Um, that means Kyosha is taking things serious on the racing side in America. 
They're going to mm-hmm. be a contender. They have you. Um, I think it's a great fit. I look forward to following uh, your career for the n- next two years and your, what you're doing. So, man, I just, I just really, like, I can't say it enough. I'm really excited. I'm really happy for you. Oh, and I wish you that. all the best. I really yeah. do wish you all the best. And Kyosho. I mean, and people know I'm not the biggest Kyosho fan here. Mm-hmm. We'll change so, it. We're going to change that. <laughs> it's not that I personally have anything against it. It's just an old beef from back in the day. Right, right. Kyosho versus Mugen. Yeah, so, it was big man, back then. So, good luck at PMB this weekend as well. I appreciate it. It should be good. And um, if anybody wants to get any information about Kyosho or anything like that, who do we who do I, who do I we point people towards? Yeah, any of my social media outlets. You know, I'm on, you know, I got Facebook. So, you got my business page or my racing page. And then you have my blog, let'src.com, and my email's on there as well. So many different ways to reach out and happy to respond. Sweet. Yeah. Well, good luck this weekend, man. Um, Thank you. I'm, I, I'm not going to pick you because I'm jinxing people. I made my pick already. I hope I didn't jinx him. <laughs> but yeah, good luck this weekend, man. I really wish you the best. I'd like to see you on the podium. Top step or, or third step. First, top step preferably, but first, second, or third will do as well for me. Uh-huh. I'm going to do my best. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Cool, dude. Um, thank you for your time. Have a good weekend. And thank you for stay, sticking around in RC and being awesome. We appreciate it. Thanks, Keenan. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Max, we have a reveal. We have the PMB track. It's Yeah. It's pretty big. It's very big. Yeah. It's definitely one of the biggest tracks in RC. Obviously, Red One is a bit bigger, but this is like, Considering this is indoors too, it's, yeah, it's always they huge. used every square footage of dirt they could oh, use. Oh yeah. So kudos to Bobby Moore and Track Masters and everybody at Race Time. They built a great track. I see they went down to the concrete section here. It's gonna be, dude. So many people are gonna make up so much time on this Joker Lane. It's just gonna be like yeah. wide open. Yeah. All the I, way down here. I think the mains are gonna be a bit hard to follow with sort of that big of it because you cut almost half the track but i'm i'm eager to see how it works out yeah i still like like to see them try it the other way where you have an extra thing you need to do mm-hmm. uh instead of cutting the track obviously a little bit hard for in space concerns but overall right. though a uh, track looks really nice uh yeah very very technical very technical so i i wonder how it will work out like does it keep good flow there's a lot of sections where you need to be very sort of square, square and shoot, sort of. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it will work out. Uh, but yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, way more technical than when I went there and, and previous years too. Last year was, wasn't this technical. And by the way, I just noticed this, but no big jumps. Not a single huge jump. No, it's like you have to string all this together. You double, double, double. Like this is all yeah. one continuous rhythm section if a turn. And then yeah. uh, they have the split lane they've tried like that they took from the nationals, which was yeah. Cool. So. Yeah, I wonder how that would work. I hope it's like national where you can do both lines, but hard to say. Well, we'll yeah. see. We'll see her yeah. soon. Um, but actually, so- like this is this is was a huge revelation for me just then. Like really? there aren't a single huge jump on the track. No, it's all because usually jumps. like usually P and B. It's there's at least one or two huge triples, but here there's yeah, no. not a single one big one. No. I don't know if that was something the purpose they went to, or if that was just like when they used a lot of dirt, they just ran out of it. I don't know I don't, which way. But, but I, like I, I mean, I'm I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this. I like but it. I'm really in. I think like, it's I'm gonna really favor Fend to now, to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, then then again, it's really technical. So there's lots of places where he can, he can make a mistake. So then I'm like, okay, Mayfield. All right, so but, let's make our top three right now. We'll call it. And then we'll we'll stick to it. And then we're going to do a watch party on Discord this week as well. So we'll punch that. All right, yeah. go ahead. Who's your top three? My top three is going to be Mayfield. In- He's going to win. We are only doing buggy picks. I'm not doing any other class. Okay. Uh, Nitro buggy, that is. Uh, Mayfield's going to win. And then we'll have... Uh, uh, this is going to be tough. We're going to have Fen second. He's going to crash in the whoops or somewhere in the technical parts of the track, and Mayfield's going to take it. So then third is going to be... 
I want to say Mason Fuller, but I'm not too confident now. Really? Because that the, the Nationals track, I think that suited him well, and he made third. But here, like like Tessman could be fast, even Ogden could be pretty fast. Tebow, like he's good in tracks like this. I know it's hard. But I'm 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 still going with Mason. So Mayfield, Fand, and Fuller. I am going Mason Fuller. Wow. Mayfield. Wow. Tebow. I can dig that. I, I could see that. The Mason is a risky one, but the two I after I don't care going. about risk. I you do have I do I seem like the type of guy that cares about risks? Not really. Exactly. I live my life dangerously. <laughs> yeah. You know, getting stranded in airports and stuff like that. All that that's how I do it. So Mason Fuller, Mayfield, Tebow. That's my picks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean last year I made the sort of uh Joker Tessman pick and it was actually right. But this year, like this track, uh his form and considering fans and Mayfield's form and even Fuller's form, uh yeah, I don't see Tessman unfortunately being up there. Please don't Please don't blow out Mason Fuller. Please don't blow out. Then it will look like I really am jinxing people. So yeah. I am yeah. saying this. And if Mason <laughs> Fuller does bad, I will never, ever pick anybody ever again. Okay. You, but you can pick second and third. You just can't pick the winner. Okay. That's it. Mason <laughs> Fuller, Mayfield, Tebow. There we go. I'm going for the Iceman team Fuller all the way. J Concepts, oh. HB, Indoors, PNB, Form His On. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. taking Mason Fuller. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. All right. All right, Max, I think that's it. Uh, shout out to everybody traveling to PNB. Have fun this weekend. Be safe. Don't drink too much. Don't party too hard. Have fun. Good luck to everybody that's running. I did uh, E-Troggy. Oh, what's it over on the E-Troggy is going to be 100 entries. How much you want to bet? Not much. East Coast. If, I mean, if there's probably going to be more e truggies than Nitro Buggies at this rate. Dude, it's going to be rammed with e truggies The yeah. East Coast loves e truggies All right. Um, you know what, Max? Good luck to everybody that's running the PNB this weekend. Have fun. Get some sleep. Don't go too hard the first couple of the first day. I know how it is. I've seen many people fall. I got 24 hours practice. 3 a.m. The next day, they can't even move. So yeah. I know, don't blow your loads. Take it all at a pace, because you got three days of madness ahead of you. Uh, drive safely, yeah. everybody. Have fun, Max. Anything to say before we leave? Not much. Uh, I hope it's going to be a nice race. Uh, yeah, me too. Have some RC excitement for a while. Yeah, uh, join. Yeah. We uh, will be doing. Yeah. We won't be doing any lives, but we'll be sharing all the YouTube yeah. and Facebook throughout the weekend. But what we want to do is I'm going to work. I'll talk to people there and find out a time, what time the Pro Nitro Buggy is going to be. And we're going to organize a watch party in our Discord. So if you haven't joined our Discord, it's at 120 plus, sorry, 420 plus RC nerds in there. So if you guys want to join us, uh, I'll put a link for our Discord in this written description. And if you want to, if you, if you listen to this and you want to join in, uh, just hit me, shoot me a max a message to get a link. <clears throat> But we're gonna do a uh, a live. Yeah, watch we're gonna party share it there. on Facebook. On the link is gonna be yeah. shared everywhere, and uh, yeah. Sweet. So, all right. Well, thank you to everybody that tunes in, man. We can't do it without you guys. Uh, the NNRC squad around the world. Please keep on sharing, commenting, liking, disliking, subscribing, commenting, reviews. Help us get out in the stratosphere. Please, we greatly appreciate it. Shout out to all the patrons of the NNRC. Max and I are going to get together and do something for you guys this weekend. Uh, thank you for all that. If you wish to be a patron of the podcast, you can. The written, in the written description of this podcast, there is a link. Thank you to all of the awesome companies. Invisible Speed. Remember, anybody, the competition that's going on. TNR Fuels, TZO Tires, High Tech RC, Beach RC, Techno RC, Lugs Racing Tires, uh, Mayako, JQSM, G Spec RC Tuning, Papa Willie's Traction Tonic, Racecraft USA, Clinic RC, RCGP, House of RC, JTP RC. Uh, shout out to my boys, RC Kevin, Alexander Hagberg, and all those good dudes. And shout out to everybody that supports us, man. We can't do it without you. One love. Nitro is the glory. E Buggy pays the bills. Max, 
say goodbye or adios. Goodbye, everyone. Keep RC fun and RC is for everyone. Keep using the yeah. hashtag. Hashtag RC is for everybody. We're going to stick with everybody. I think it's easy. Okay. Uh, all, right. Yeah. all right. Everybody. All right. We guys will see you this weekend on our watch party. Good luck to everybody at PNB. Lefty and Max are.